day 26. I am just out buzzing about errands. I've got my uh, Classy Pal apron here. This thing is so handy. Um, you can just put it in the car. Um, it's great for eating on the go. Some of you all uh, were jazzed about it in my last video last week. Um, you said you were intrigued to get it for your family members for the holidays. So, uh, yeah, I'm loving it. Uh, and uh, it's handy in the, the kitchen. Keeps your uh, work clothes clean. So, I am loving it. I love the cute little pearl thing on it. It looks like... Uh, it looks like uh, Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys are interested in getting one, check the description box below. I can save you 15% with a coupon code. So, saving money. But speaking of saving money, I'm here at Costco. But I just reapplied, prior to coming out, I just reapplied the Aven um, uh, SPF 50 sunscreen that you guys sent me from um, Europe. And I really like this a lot. Um, I'm wondering if anybody has tried the American version and how and what your thoughts are on the, the Aven American chemical sunscreen. Does it sting? Does it burn? It, you know, is it like your favorite? Because this one is really nice and it doesn't have any fragrance. It doesn't have avabenzone in it. For UVA, it has tinosorb instead. So it's far less irritating, less likely to cause that kind of stinging stuff. Um, still need to reapply every two hours, as I've said. But the nice thing about this is that uh, the UVA filter in here is a little bit more robust, if you will, than the UVA filter in the American Chemical Sunscreens, which is avabenzone. Avabenzone reaches um, UVA. UVA, you guys, is the wavelength that doesn't burn you. It's the one you don't, you don't sense. It's the one that uh, penetrates deeply, ages the skin, and contributes to um, wrinkles and likely a component of skin cancer as well. Um, so yeah, I'm loving this. The Japanese sunscreens that I use also have tinosorb in them as well. I'm wondering like, does anybody have any trips this summer coming up? Or I guess not summer. Trips coming up to other countries. Um, and uh, have you ever tried to purchase sunscreen abroad and was it like confiscated at customs or anything? I'm intrigued. Um, I haven't traveled in a long time so I do not know but anyways I'm gonna buzz into Costco but it's another sunny gorgeous day out I mean the sun is high as a high in the sky but I'm wearing my coolie bar cardigan as additional UPF I love this lighter one but yeah so I'm over here in the Christmas light section and Kind of eyeing this LED tree. <laughs> I'm sort of thinking of getting that and I'm tempted to get it in lieu of an actual tree. I'm sure that wouldn't go over well but it's kind of cute. But check out this giant snowman. I mean who doesn't need a 72 inch LED twinkling snowman in their life? Does he sing? That would be awesome. <laughs> Prelit Garland, 30 bucks. Isn't he adorable? He'd look really cute, like by my door or something. Oh. How sad is it that I would pay $50 for this plastic friend? <laughs> okay, I would just like to point out that I would have been elated to receive this dollhouse as a child. It is like pretty high quality appearing. Look, it's even got a elevator thing going on in it. And the spiral staircase. It's so cool. But check this out. It like, apparently it folds up into this little play kitchen. It's actually like a lot of potential fun option there. You've got your little house and then, oh it's a different one. I'm looking at this one. This one folds up into a play kitchen. It's cool. How cute is that? This little mini mouse you can put these little plastic outfits on. Probably would have enjoyed that as a child too. <laughs> or slash adult. <laughs> Alright, quickie uh, trunk, uh, 
Just a quickie uh, Costco little uh, swing in here. I got, of course, my fresh spinach. Um, I'll put all this in my little cooler bag here. Um, and look what they got in, my favorite, the fresh cranberries. I absolutely love these. And I also got almond milk. I just took it out of the jumbo box that it comes in and I give that back to Costco so they can recycle it for, they reuse those boxes. So that way I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> it's just easier to carry in. And I of course got some of my organic cauliflower rice and some celery. So yeah, just a few little quick pickups here at Costco, but Stoked as smoke to have this. Oh, and then I also got <laughs> TMI toilet paper because it's like rebating right now the Scott toilet paper on Ibotta. So I went ahead and stocked up because, you know, you got to have it. I'm here at Witch Witch for lunch. And I'm donning my apron because I, of course, got a lettuce switch. And they tend to be a little messy. Oh. And I was a little haphazard with my sunscreen reapplication, so I've got some white residual. But I just ordered a lettuce switch for lunch, and they tend to be quite messy, so I'm donning my apron because why not protect the, uh, my outfit before I go back out into the world? <laughs> Well, hey guys, so it is the end of the day and I was just uh, throwing together some stuff in my crock pot and uh, sitting down here to catch up on a little reading here. The, um, this is the, uh, here I'll just show you the top of it. This is one of the journals that I read. It's called the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology. Yeah, I get this one and one other one, but for the most part, I stick to reading everything online. I just find that it cuts down on unwanted paper and that what sort that sort of thing. But um, you know, once I finish reading this particular journal, then I oftentimes will leave it like in the medical library for other people to use. So it's not like I keep them um, indefinitely, so they don't occupy space. But this particular um, month's issue, um, it comes out every month. Um, this particular month's issue um, has a, a review article on post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which um, if you are suffering from that, I have a dark spots and melasma Q&A that kind of covers um, some uh, you know, common questions that I get about it. But hearkening back to yesterday's video about um, you know why I don't use vitamin C serum, I primarily was speaking in that video to um, vitamin C serum and anti-aging. I don't think I mentioned um, dark spots or melasma in it because um, you know I, I feel as though for the most part you guys ask me about it in the setting of like is it necessary for anti-aging or should we be using one for you know wrinkles and blah 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 and I always just say no skip it focus your attention on sunscreen that's where the data really is. Um, vi topical vitamin C there is some thought that it can inhibit uh, some of the biology of how um, pigment cells uh, pigment is produced and um, so you know there are many many um, different types of treatments for dark spots and melasma and probably the best uh, most efficacious one is um, hydroquinone um, which I mentioned which I talked about in that video the dark spots melasma video 
Um, and so that's actually the most efficacious treatment for dark spots and melasma, hands down. Other things, um, you know, include um, prescription retinoids, differin. These things can all actually be helpful. But vit vitamin C serum is one thing that people have always been interested in. And, um, you know, people report kind of observing a a an improvement. But the study um, that they speak about in here clearly showed that in comparison to hydroquinone, hydroquinone far superseded uh, vitamin C as far as topical vitamin C as far as its ability to improve um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and the, the vitamin C serum really didn't do much. So you have to be really, really aggressive with sun protection. In fact, studies have shown that being aggressive with sun protection alone, people had a greater improvement in their um, dark spots and melasma than those who did not when that was the only thing that happened, okay? So people did either did nothing or did aggressive, aggressive sun protection. And the aggressive, aggressive sun protection, um, those people improved substantially more than, than the others and much faster. So it is imperative, guys, that you really, I mean, you've got to be so diligent if that's what you're dealing with and you're motivated to change it. If you don't have that behavior in place, everything else you do is essentially useless. Um, I've got my sweet little owl guy going there, um, on my fall leaves owl. And update on the candle front. Okay, I can attest. The hay honey, this is um, what I keep calling it hay honey because that's what it says on there. It's honeyed pear. Honestly, it does not smell at all like a pear. I don't know what Bath and Body Works was thinking. If you know, if they had a stroke and somehow they're um, you know, all factory bulb got jolted and they confused. What it smells like is like a baked good baking in the oven, not a pear. And it doesn't smell like, like an autumnal baked good either. That is a candle that does not is not distinctly autumnal at all, like I would think a, a pear would be. But I really, really love it. Okay, but in terms of the update, that is the one candle that I placed in the freezer for approximately, I don't know, five, four or five days prior to burning. And I can attest that the burn time seems more prolonged. Now, disclaimer, some of the Bath and Body Works candles, they vary with burn time based on the fragrance. So the best way to really assess that is if I buy another Hey Honey Pear candle and burn it, um, burn it without freezing it and you know to compare and contrast but I didn't do that but this one is burning much I'm getting a longer burn time out of it than I did with the leaves one which I did not place in the freezer so yeah fun update there and what else can I tell you guys about oh I got a uh, package in the mail today so I mentioned the other day that um, I'm just about out of my um, my jar of beauty dust I have um, actually like one or two more servings so I went ahead and ordered two more jars from Moon Juice Shop directly of their new blend potency taste I think the new blend it, it's definitely more potent I completely agree with them um, and I actually really like the the enhanced potency um, many of you ask me like what it tastes like I can't really describe it it's just it's just sort of heavenly, honestly. I really enjoy it. And it's subtly sweet. Um, some people find it too sweet. I just put it in my Bustello coffee and I love it that way. Um, I've never had it like in tea or anything else other than Bustello coffee. And it just, I find it enhances the flavor of the coffee while imparting like almost an earthy sweetness to it. So I got two more jars of it. You know, you know, I've been consuming this. And for those of you who are new, I have a video on why I drink this. It is exclusively for the taste, okay? There's no reported health benefit with consuming this. I don't think personally, um, you know, Kind of anecdotally, I feel as though, you know, my, con my, 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 uh, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm not speaking clearly, but I feel as though my concentration is somewhat improved, even though that was not a good example of that. I feel like my concentration is somewhat improved, but that being said, probably in the past year, 
I've made some changes in my sleeping environment that have improved the quality of my sleep. So there's that, you know, potential confounding variable. Um, but I was, I had to get this. It was a bit of an impulse purchase. I will update you guys. I'm not going to start consuming it right away, but I wanted to try their protein powders because they have a few of them and they're supposed to be really good. And they have this blue adaptogen protein and um, it is a vegan protein. It contains sprouted brown rice protein. It's got chia seeds in it, which are, you know is great. I don't know what tocotrienols are. Stevia and blue magic. I have no idea what that is, guys. Hopefully it is not some sort of illegal substance. But in two scoops of this, it has 20 grams of protein. You get 20 servings in this thing. Knowing me, I will probably consume one scoop um, per serving and split it up or something like that because, you know, like I've said, I'm not a nutritionist or dietitian, but 20 grams of protein in one sitting seems like kind of superseding a threshold for utility. So I prefer to split up my protein more evenly throughout the day. But anyways, I'm gonna put you guys on the charger and get on my phone call, head to the gym, and I'll check in with you later. Well, hey guys, how's it going? I just uh, got out of the shower. Um, coming back to what I was talking about with the dark spots, melasma kind of thing, I wanna talk a little bit about the sunscreen that I showed this morning that you guys sent me um, from Europe, the um, Aven um, O Thermal Emulsion. I mentioned this a little bit this morning. This is not the same um, product as what you buy here in the United States under Aven. They're formulated differently, okay, in that this product contains uh, Tinosorb, which is not FDA approved here in the U.S., unfortunately. Tinosorb is a chemical sunscreen filter that blocks UVA, which is the ray that penetrates really deeply. I mentioned that this morning. It's a ray that ages us. Ages us. Um, it's a longer wavelength of light, and if you're somebody dealing with dark spots, melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, discoloration, you really need to cover that wavelength, okay? It's the wavelength that tans you. It doesn't necessarily burn you, okay? It's the one that, you know, when people are seeking a tan, they're, they're obviously getting too much UVA, okay? And this sunscreen from Europe and the Japanese ones have filters that are more stable, a little bit more stable, cover the UVA range uh, a little bit more reassuredly than the ones that we have here in the US. And <clears throat> as far as the um, stringency of how European and Japanese and, and sunscreens are regulated, I think here in the US, unfortunately, we're a little bit too lenient in that um, as far as our thresholds for UVA um, protection. So what I'm saying here is that if you're somebody who has dark spots or melasma and you're relying on a chemical sunscreen here in the United States, namely one that has avabenzone, that's really our main UVA player, okay, is avabenzone that might not be enough, okay? Really, unfortunately, what the best sunscreen is for people with dark spots and melasma, the best sunscreen ingredients um, here in the US um, and, in, and probably globally, to be honest with you, are those that contain like mineral particles, zinc and titanium dioxide. And I say unfortunately because the better they are at, at, at the bigger they are, the, the more of a white film they're going to leave behind. And who, I mean, who is that the most cosmetically unappealing on? People with prone to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, darker skin types, okay? If you're fair as can be, sometimes you can get away with using a zinc or titanium dioxide um, sunscreen and not be bothered by it because you're really fair and you know the white cast you can blend it in pretty well cover it with a little bit of you know makeup and it's fine but if you're a darker skin type that is very unsightly but unfortunately those are the sunscreens that you really need to be using and it's a shortcoming for sure and so you know I just wanted to draw your attention to that that if you're somebody um, with acne that's healing with dark marks if you're somebody with um, you know you had a rash and it left behind a stain in the skin that you're trying to, to you're wondering if it's ever going to go away 
it's critical that you keep that bad boy out of the sun, okay? And, you know, if it's on your face, you can't always really keep your face out of the sun, unfortunately. You, your best your best bet is to go with one that is the most cosmetically displeasing, okay? The one that has zinc titanium dioxide. Unfortunately, that's really the reality because our chemical sunscreens here, unlike this one, we just don't get into UVA that well. Additionally, visible light, which is even, you know, um, visible light is the light that you see. That also contributes contributes to dark spots and discoloration. And so, um, you know, chemical filters here in the U.S., they don't cut it in, the, in those wavelengths. You need to really be relying on the, the minerals for, f to get you into that. And also, looking for an inactive ingredient called iron oxide, okay? Um, I've mentioned this before in some of my sunscreen videos, but I just wanna bring it back up again in that if you're somebody here in the U.S. who is dealing with dark spots and melasma or any kind of hyperpigmentation, okay, whether it be dark discoloration around the lips, in the armpits, even though they're not really exposed to light, um, anywhere on the body, uh, on the sides of the face, if you are relying on, first of all, if you're not doing sunscreen, you need to start. If you're relying on our chemical sunscreens, it's probably not enough, to be frank. Um, and, you know, that's really just a shortcoming of them, unfortunately. Sunscreen, however, as I've said on here before, it's a behavior that when done cumulatively alongside other behaviors, other measures, namely like wearing a broad brimmed hat, avoiding the sun during peak hours, cumulatively, those behaviors um, impact an outcome. And that outcome, you know, in my heart is skin care cancer prevention, but also, you know, a lot of cosmetic concerns, photo aging, discoloration, and a lot of inflammatory skin conditions like acne, for example, can be worsened by, by too much sun exposure. So, oh, I just dropped the lid here. Anyways, I just wanted to bring it back to my favorite topic here, SPF, okay? Um, thank you guys so much for sending me this. I will try to not... Um, throw the lid down here, um, but I'm really enjoying this one, and I look forward to trying out the La Roche-Posay one that you all sent me. Yes, I know, again, we have La Roche-Posay here, but not the same. It's just not the same, okay? Not the same ingredients as far as the sunscreen filters, and I also got a Biore one from, from Europe, and the Japanese ones are, are swimming. They're going along swimmingly, so I've really been enjoying all of those, but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the vlog today. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.